We're going to continue um, introducing Julia to Arancio, um, who is going to talk about um, open source hardware and especially open source hardware for science in Latin America. Hello. Hi, everyone. I'm trying to share my screen. Okay, you should be able to see it now. Okay. So, um, hi everyone, as, and thank you, Nadia, for the introduction. I, as you mentioned, I'm Julieta Arancio. I'm super happy to be here, a bit nervous also, at the Upper Harbor Summit. And I'm going to um, share some of the work that we are doing at the Latin American Network for Open Science Hardware, or RIGOSH, as it says there. So um, in Rigosh, we are a community of uh, researchers, activists, students, artists, makers, pushing for open science hardware adoption in Latin America. The idea of the network was born in 2017 after the second gathering of the GOSH, the Global Open Science Hardware Community, uh, which was in Chile. So some people who attended that event, which was a great event, uh, were already part of other similar regional networks like TechnoX, for example. Others were independent researchers, um, activists, and we started slowly connecting, trying to organize ourselves. And as you can see there in the map, we currently have nodes in seven countries. Um, each node has like uh, its distinctive flavors. Some are more academic, some are more community oriented, others are more interested in entrepreneurship and business. Um, but we're moving. <laughs> so, Besides our, our differences that I just mentioned, we felt that in order to make open science hardware um, work in our context, we would need to appropriate not only the tools, but like the, the concept of open hardware itself. Uh, just like as, as an illustration in Spanish, when you say hardware, the first thing that comes to your mind is electronics, right? So, so we had to like try to understand how the concept worked for us. Um, and in general, in Latin America, but, um, research and education are publicly funded. Um, and in general, also, unfortunately, um, investment in science and technology is quite low. So the combination of this very low investment in science and technology and proprietary hardware is like is a horrible situation. And this makes us face some specific barriers that, of course, we work with the global community and other other regions that also face them. Um, such as, for example, um, imports, import restrictions that make costs and delays that um, prohibitive uh, for some groups to access to hardware, uh, official technical service that is usually not available or, or when it's available is unaffordable, so tools are basically not repairable. Um, and a very important thing is that the hardware tools we, we need are usually designed very far away from where we are using them, so making... Um, <laughs> using them in our context, usually, I mean, we, we have to adapt to the tool instead of the tool being useful for us. Um, being proprietary, they are not customizable, which is another very big problem. And in general, this generates a, a great dependence on suppliers from the global north. And in this, especially in this context of crisis, we are seeing the consequences of not having tech sovereignty more than ever. So as a result, local research questions that are uh, absolutely valuable for uh, our context usually cannot be pursued or have to be adapted. Um, there are less opportunities for students to get proper working experience with equipment. And we also have to run less powerful studies because we have less equipment available. So all, all these, these conditions like feed into an already significant gap that we have in, in knowledge production between North and South. So as I was saying, instead of being enabled by technology, sometimes you feel you become dependent on what is available out there and what you can do with the situation. So our proposal um, back in um, 2018, we applied and got a grant from um, CITER, which is an Ibero-American program for science and technology. And the proposal included the development of regional Latin American um, open science hardware residences. And that's where the RE in RIGOSH comes from, uh, that we are usually <laughs> get questions about. So residences are the instrument that we decided was the best for us. Uh, we would gather members of 
the Rigosh network annually during three weeks, each time at a different node and with a different theme to work on. So following the, the principles in the Gosh Manifesto that we, uh, that we also take, um, we would gather people from different backgrounds and expertise, of course, gender balance, to build together um, open hardware prototypes use, that are useful locally. So they are made uh, using locally available expertise, materials, and tools. Participants apply with a project in mind, and they document their work uh, in, the, in the local language. And they also showcase what they do, if possible, while they are doing it in those three weeks to the community where they are working. Um, residencies were also designed with the idea of pooling resources and capabilities. So uh, prototyping time alternates with skill sharing of different relevant topics. And another key aspect is that designs, of course, should be uh, reusable by the other nodes after their residency. So in 2019, we ran the first of four uh, residences that we got funding for. Um, it was organized by Centro de Tecnología Académica, it's um, a research institute in physics, but it's like a reference in open hardware for science in our region, in Porto Alegre in Brazil. And besides the logistics of, this was pre-pandemic world, so besides the logistics of flying uh, 15 people to Brazil, there was a lot of intense organizing uh, work done before the residency, selecting the participants to, that come from a diversity of backgrounds and expertise, but are compatible and selecting the projects they will work on and trying to get the materials, uh, making sure not everyone is from, uh, from the academy. Um, the local organizers in CTA that had like a, a, a lot of work also run a successful crowdfunding campaign because the funds we have cover mobility. Um, again, in a pre-pandemic world, they cover the flights, the cost of the flights to, the, to each node each year, but nothing else. So we had to cover the materials. And again, as I mentioned before, one of the most important goals of the residency was to build capacity for collaborative open hardware design in every node uh, through the participants. So this is why the skill sharing sessions on software tools for hardware design were important, but also project management sessions and collaborative work sessions were um, really uh, foundational for the event. As a result, uh, you can see <clears throat> those uh, little images there are also a product of the residency. Um, participants worked on seven projects. Some logos are there, not all. Uh, all the documentation is available at the Rigosh GitLab instance, which was also created during this event. So I wanted, oops, sorry. I wanted to quickly um, share some of the projects that people are working on. And to start with um, digital fabrication tools, Mini CNC is this project that it says they are POA because that's Porto Alegre and Buenos Aires is where it was replicated. You can see that the image is parted in two different um, sites. Mini, uh, Mini CNC is, is a project that was initiated in the residency in Brazil. And the idea is that it functions as an introduction to the principles of digital fabrication tools. The exercise is to build a mini CNC machine control, very simple control with an Arduino board using recycled parts from old CDs and DVD readers. And with a super simple firmware that allows people to quickly grasp what's going on. Um, the idea is that they, they do this and then they continue, for example, they in the residency, they built um, a machine that could draw and with a pen and then continue with more complex designs. After the residency, the team back in Buenos Aires in Argentina replicated that and started changing the project. The project, For example, um, they made it bigger, they added a, a Dremel tool, uh, they made it much more stable. Um, so they designed the pieces for that. So it was like a whole uh, learning process that still continues. This team is based at a university research lab in Buenos Aires, and as a result, they're using, the first thing they did was, they made was to produce um, a mini robot for uh, automating lab tasks. And they are collaborating that now, and we will hear more about that soon. Another thing that I wanted to, to share was a project that, uh, again, was born at the residency, is the soil respiration chamber, is the, with the idea of appropriating a design originally shared by the Hacteria community. Um, it is a portable low-cost device that is able to measure CO2 flux in a soil sample, uh, which is an indirect measure of biological activity and quality of the soil. So after the residence, that project uh, was continued by the, another node in Argentina in the west, in Mendoza. Um, the participants there 
partnered with a cooperative producing food and beverages and with an initiative uh, for education and research oriented towards local producers, which are usually family-scale agriculture, uh, farmers, and indigenous local communities who have problems of access to land. So what they did was to set up um, Laboratorio Campesino, which I think the little translation is peasant lab, um, where open hardware is being used to support research on the uh, transition to agroecology that these groups are going through. And this is super important because um, there is a whole discussion now, uh, at least uh, I'm Argentinian, so <laughs> I know that there's a whole discussion uh, towards if, about the benefits of agroecology, if it is, if it's not, and um, open hardware there could be super useful. Uh, before the pandemic, the activities included many uh, workshops with people uh, doing soil quality analysis, using chromatographies, using open hardware instruments, um, using, for example, the open flexure microscope, which you will hear about later in another talk. Um, now with the pandemic, we're trying to understand how to start working again, including using the soil respiration chamber. Um, and then we have projects that were not part of were not born at the residency, but uh, are developed by members of the network. So uh, one of those, I put two here on the left. The Gorgas tracker is an open source GPS tracker developed by two early career researchers in Peru that had very limited funding to run an epidemiological study with communities in the Peruvian Amazon. And they had a problem besides the tiny budget. Um, the commercially, the standard for equipment for that project didn't work in the Amazon conditions. So Rather than using their small budget to import that, they decided to build their own based on the reform, uh, the reform platform by, from Seed Studio. And in less than a year, the results of their pilot were so relevant that they, um, the Peruvian Ministry of Health decided to incorporate them into national policy, and they had uh, a health innovation lab created for them at university. And on the right, Vuela is a project that is built in open source drones. Um, it started as a community project, and it was then picked up um, by agricultural researchers in um, public institutions in Argentina, but it, it, they started running uh, workshops in all in seven countries of Latin America, building these drones and teaching people uh, how to use them. And now you have seven countries of Latin America with drones that are proper scientific instruments for research, in this case, in agricultural science and climate change. So, um, we were supposed to have a residency in 2020, but of course, it ironically, it was focused on biomedical devices, but it was cancelled, of course, because of the pandemic. Um, it was not cancelled, sorry, it was postponed because we we're going to do, we have the funds to run it again. Um, and um, as Megan well illustrated and explained, it, the pandemic was a, a big hit for us because although there was a lot of attention on hardware communities and a lot of attention of distributed manufacturing of PPEs, it was really, really difficult for us to coordinate an effort uh, with the groups we had at hand, let's say, and um, it, we, we were just overwhelmed. Also being uh, very diverse and having lots of people within our network that are not affiliated to any institution, um, it, we we see how their participation is, is lower than, than the previous year, um, and we are trying to understand how to support these people. So we're trying to see uh, during 2020, so what, what can we do? Um, we realized that Rigosh born for, <laughs> like born as an organizing of residences, but there was also a lot more that we could do. And we started an It's Ongoing, an effort for organizing open debate sessions in Spanish and Portuguese around specific topics that the notes want to share from the work. Um, also, our members participate in other virtual sessions of other communities. We have uh, tried to reach out to strategic allies, such as the um, recently created Latin American um, Association for, Open, for Citizen Science, which could be, a, a, we think, an important user of, of the hardware we produce. And uh, we work also in our governance structure as a community. But also, and in a way, reflecting what is going on at the global community, we started to uh, write down and discuss our own ideas for advocating for open hardware at the policy level. Um, besides, in each node, trying to contact uh, university people and trying to spread the word, um, we are going to participate um, in CILAC, which is a very important UNESCO-organized regional forum for science and, and technology, uh, where many people from policy attend, and this is by the end of April. And we are going to be there trying to push for open hardware uh, policy, promoting what we do. 
um, looking forward and already well into 2021, we have some important challenges to face. First is that we still want to run residences, but we cannot do it. We have to do it remotely. So how can we run collaborative projects without gathering? That is something we're discussing. Um, the other thing that we have to, we will be working on is to exploring and promoting more the idea of how open hardware can give a possibility of, uh, for making a living, right? Because we see two cases, we see people that uh, are hobbyists, of course, as, as usual, and they want to turn their uh, the project into a product, they want to support that people, but also we want to support the, the case where researchers develop something and they want to do continue doing research they don't want to go into business so how can how can we connect people that would love to go into business um with these researchers and have them work together and finally um we're going we're working on strengthening these partnerships with um that, that, that can give us uh collaborations with people who can um, ask for new hardware designs um who can become new users and we can have successful stories also to to impact more and policy making. So um, we invite everyone who wants to join Rigosh to contact us directly. You can visit our website. All the documentation for the projects I mentioned today is in our website slash projects. All the links are there. And you can also write to me if you want. We are open to uh, new partnerships, projects, and discussing the challenges I mentioned. I will be in the chat too. Thank you.